Hey everybody, I'm here today with my man, Larry Lawton. This is the Convict Comeback. This is the part two. I'm actually at Larry's house right now. We met in New York the first time. Now we're here in Florida where it's comfortable weather for us. It's kickback, it's laid back. There's guns and gators everywhere. <laughs> Larry, thank you. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, JD. No guns, convicted felon. Allegedly. Right. <laughs> but the uh, welcome back. Uh, and welcome to my home. Welcome to my home studio. Uh, and JD, man, I'm having fun with you today. Hey, I appreciate it, man. This place is really nice. Thank you for having me and Jax. We appreciate being here with you, man. And that roast beef sandwich that we talked about in the last one, man, that was everything this man said it would be. Larry doesn't cap, y'all. Main Street Pub in downtown Melbourne, best roast beef sandwich on the planet. And I've been around. Now, people say, no, here, here. I'll try them. I want to get another one and to see how good it was. And you could, you tell me how good it was. I can confirm 100% Larry is Illuminati, and he knows the best roast beef sandwich on the planet. I got to tell you a quick Illuminati thing. Run it. I was in New York City, and when we did the highest podcast, above uh, above sea level of the area or not sea level above the you know the ground level of where we did it on the 102nd floor of the empire state building we met nick and i an illuminati i'm not kidding you freaked us out i mean this guy knew shit and i'm like whoa something's not right and he worked like undercover in the empire state building wild shit i believe that 100 percent. i'm not crazy man and I'm also not surprised that Nick was freaked out. Uh, I was freaked out too, man. I'm telling you what, you <laughs> freaked freak me out. So I, I want to give a second to thank Nick. He's uh, doing all the production here today. Uh, he's Larry's assistant, and uh, he's a great dude, man. We love Nick. Let me ask you a couple questions here, Larry, while I've got you here. So um, you went to prison for, just as a quick recap. I went to prison for racketeering the, under the RICO Act, uh, for armed robberies, the biggest jewel robber in the United States, armed robberies robbed between 15 and 18 million. Uh, I ended up going away under the RICO Act. I ended up doing four 12-year sentences run concurrently. Uh, did my time, and now I'm here with you, buddy. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I love the comeback story. So tell me real quick, your program... Uh, what is your program? Because I want people that may not know you, that may not have seen you on the last episode, uh, to understand how much you've impacted the world around you today. You know, thank you for that. But uh, I don't know. If, I just love young people. And like you, you at Recovery, me with young people. I developed a program called the Reality Check Program. It's now used in court systems, in police agencies, by the federal government. I was recognized on the floor of the United States Congress for that program. I am the only ex-con who's an honorary cop. I don't know how that stands. <laughs> but only man ever in Lake St. Louis. And it was because the police department there is the best police department I've ever seen in my life. They don't want to arrest you. They help people. You know what the cops get awards for there? When they stop and help a citizen change a flat, the chief gave them an award. Not how many arrests you get. Not how many DUIs you pick up, how many churches you speak at, how many schools you go to, how many people you help. That's the police department I want to support. Not the gung-ho motherfuckers. I couldn't say that. I'm sorry, JD. Yo, we had a bet that Larry couldn't go a whole podcast without cussing. And oh, and it's okay, my man. It's okay. You made it through the first few minutes, so YouTube will probably let us slide. Yeah, I think they would because, I, I mean, I always say to myself, I won't do it. But you know what? On national TV, when I'm on those things, there's so many cameras and so many people around. I'm figuring out ways to get by the, you know, the, the, the guys who the, check you and stuff like that, the lawyers and stuff. You know, they have those guys with the button, the seven-second buttons. Yeah. I'm trying to get around those guys. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so look, man, I know that you probably aren't going to be able to speak about this, but it would be great to get the exclusive here on, on my channel for my community right here and now. I'm going to ask you straight up, are you Batman? Is Nick Robin? We have to take the fifth. Okay. 
Got to take the there. fifth, and, and for for reasons, you know, I can't let the car come out of the cave, so I I, oh, I, I can't say much. I have to leave it at that. Uh, so you do admit you have a cave? Ah, uh, no comment. God, I almost had you locked in there too, buddy. All right, so um, when you <laughs> when you were in prison, uh, are, is there like a heavy gang presence in the federal penitentiaries that you were at? Well, let me put it this way: Bloods. Crips, GD, DC boys, dirty white boys, Aryan brother, Aryan circle, Aryan nation, uh, Bloods, Crips, uh, DC. Then you also had Nietas, G27s, Latin Kings. They had every single gang uh, you can think of. From you know, even Mexicans, of course, MA, Bices, Nathaniel, Sereños, uh, Border Brothers, a, a number of others. Uh, yes, gang presence is in every prison. You know that as well as I do, JD. Now the Feds. Just happened to have a lot of the leaders. I was in prison with some gang leaders, mafia bosses, uh, uh, hitmen. So everybody in the prison, because I was in maximum security prison. Yeah. We we didn't see states are are different just because they're they're localized. I mean, if you're in Oregon State Prison, you got the crazies in Oregon. There's no question about that. That's a penitentiary. Uh, if you're in Jersey or California, whatever state you're in, you're gonna have the crazy. The feds were like the collecting tool when, when it got crazy, when you made so much money. Jewelry robbery is not a federal crime, is it? No. There's nothing federal about it. What made my crime federal is the federal government wanted me. So they RICO'd me. And how they do that is under the RICO Act, I had Hobbs Act robbery. Hobbs Act means interfering with interstate commerce because the jewelry store buys its diamonds from another state, they can now make that federal because you're now interfering with interstate commerce, i.e. federal government now jumps in. You can actually rob a McDonald's and they can make it federal if they want because McDonald's buys its potatoes from Idaho. Now, do they do that? No. When they want you, they do. <laughs> they Why want did they want Larry? Well, Larry was uh, the biggest jewel robber in the United States at the time. They did not know who I, I still am. I'm considered to this day the biggest jewel robber. Not proud of that. It is what it is. It makes us, you know, we are who we are. You can't change our past. Uh, it is who we are. And I wouldn't change my past. I'm not that, you know, listen, I wasn't killing people in robberies. I wasn't beating people down. But I did put fear in them. I did tie up over 100 people. I did a lot of bad things that are not good. So... But the feds got me because the insurance companies did not like Larry Lawton. Remember, when Larry Lawton is stealing a lot of money, funny story, the federal government said to me, hey, Larry, you got $1.2 million out of that store. I said, $1.2 million? You got about eight hundred. He goes, he starts laughing. The federal agent, he's just since passed. He's a nice guy, too. He says, well, they put down $1.2 million. He even laughed. He goes, hey, I'd do the same thing. And they would. I mean, let's face it. I'm not denying it wasn't robbed. Just, you know, who, who's saying how much? So the insurance companies didn't like me. So, and them, <coughs> claiming, them claiming more money as a loss didn't impact your sentencing, really, did it? No, because in, in the federal system, it goes by the levels. It wasn't to the point they were saying, I didn't rob it or I robbed millions and millions more. They were tacking on 100 grand, 200 grand here and there, even if it was a million or two. I'm at such a level at that point. The, see how the federal sentencing guidelines go. It goes by your level of crime, what it was, obviously, you know, your criminal history. Not that I had a good one there. <laughs> and then the level. And when they figure the points out, it's the money value. So it goes to a million, five million, ten million, then you go above this. I think they, I was at their max anyway. Okay. So I know exactly <laughs> what it feels like to get handed an indictment that says the state of Oregon versus J.D. DeLay or the state of Florida versus J.D. DeLay. But when you get handed your indictment, it's the United States of America against Larry Lawton. How does that feel? You know, that's a great question, and nobody's ever asked me that question on a show, so that, I kudos on that. Uh, that is, you know, I did the law. I ended up getting my law degree in prison, so I fought the system a lot. 
It's amazing how much money, manpower, and resources are made with the federal government against you. You said it. The United States of America versus this peon, Larry Lawton. Well, the federal government is so powerful in the United States of America. If they want a witness to be in court in Georgia and you're in California, they'll send an F-16 to get your ass and, and have you there in, you know, two hours. They can do that. And I've seen some crazy stuff. Stop helicopter rides to get a guy in court. States can't do that. Not only states or, or counties or cities, they run out of money. They, they ha- don't continue the job. Say Oregon is looking for JD. Well, they got a cop on his case. Well, the cop's retired. Now, they got other cops. They don't hire another cop just for JD. That other cop has got new cases coming in. He's got another murder that just happened. He got another robbery that just happened. Well, in the feds, they will get a a federal agent who's on your case, and they hire him, and he's on your case with unlimited resources. That is what the United States of America means against Larry Lawton. No resources. Yeah. So do you think... (coughs) Excuse me. Do you think that the the high rates, like the statistics of people getting convicted, because isn't it like 99%? It's over 98%. Not, there's a reason for that, too. Plea bargains? Intimidation? Well, well, plea bargains more so of they will get an indictment. First of all, it's a great story when I hear people say, oh, man, the federal, the DEA came into my house. They aggressed me. But, you know, I got down there, and my lawyer said we had enough. They let me go. They're going to drop it. Wrong. CI. Automatic. Snitch. Because the federal government does not come into your house with a warrant and something that they're going to drop for some bullshit. They're going to make them maybe be a CI. Here's what happens. When the federal government puts a warrant out for you, they have an indictment, let's just say, of a drug ring of... 30 people, they are going to flip a few percentage of that. The others will get plea bargains, and you, Larry Lawton, might fight the case, might win it, and they still got a 98% uh, uh, conviction rate uh, because the guys who, the, the snitches are in, the guys are in. You fought it. You could win it. And to fight that, though, you better have resources beyond resources, beyond resources, because they're not coming. They're not unprepared. Anybody ever tells you the FBI is stupid, walk away. No, run away from them because they (laughs) don't know what they're talking about. What do you think is going to happen with this indictment against Donald Trump? You know, it's a great, great question. Uh, I did talk about this once. Uh, This is really, really interesting. And my, this is my opinion. What's going to happen. I think Donald Trump, Listen, Donald Trump's crazy. I love him, but he's crazy. Uh, I think they're going to end up working out something with him. Something's going to happen. And I think what's going to happen is he's going to end up, the President Biden or whoever it is, is going to end up uh, parting and giving him a pardon if he, you know, goes to golf course and doesn't mention the media, doesn't mention stuff. There's no way in my in my scenarios that I could see a sitting or an ex-president actually be in prison. Could you imagine a president of the United States on your yard? I don't see it. I see maybe them working out something with like house arrest, like lock them down at Mar-a-Lago or something. Wow, wouldn't that be some prison to go to? But like even that, (laughs) even that, even a conviction is not going to stop him from being a president. You can, you can literally get elected and still be president while incarcerated. There's no running law saying that that can't happen. Well, they say if the, if he did win the election, he made his first act in office is just to pardon himself. Uh, and he can do that. There's no law. There's no, all scholars are saying he can do that. I'm, listen, no matter what we think, wh- where my politics is so in the middle. I like Donald Trump's policies, a lot of them. I, I don't like his craziness, but, uh, but I do. I, it's actually fun. Now. I notice this sound crazy on your show because you're pretty normal. I like the chaos. I think it's funny when he starts naming these candidates, little Marco, low energy Jeb. Uh, I'm dying (laughs) to see that. That's going to be fun. But 
I don't think the American people could actually vote for a uh, indict, not only just indicted and even convicted person. Here's why. I do think he has his base like everybody else. Maybe it's 35 percent of all right, we'll vote for him. If, if, if horns start coming out of his head, they'll still vote for him saying that it would their makeup. Uh, that's for fact. But I do think that the majority of people and I do think the majority of people are done with this. We need a president. I, I think this should be a law. I don't think anybody should be uh, be able to run for office over 65. Yeah. We have a man in office right now, sorry to say. I think he's uh, he's uh, you know, he's on the downside there big big time. And uh I just think we are at the point in politics in this country where we got to get younger people. We need fresh blood. We need 100%. fresh blood, but you know, I got I I I'll, I'll be remiss if I didn't say this. My assistant Nick, you know, smart young man, he goes, "Larry, you talk about that. Go vote, go this, but you were the one that messed this up." And he's right. I corrupted politicians. I had a mayor in my pocket. I, you know, I, I did bad things with politicians and manipulated the system the way we wanted. Uh, what does that say about the system? You I don't didn't know. Invent that wheel, though. No, this I didn't. Been in play for decades sure. and well, decades mankind, before, before we were even a glint in the milkman's eye. So we can't really take the blame about that. But moving forward. We should have younger, fresh blood. I personally, it's my belief that I don't think anyone should hold that office unless they have put their life on the line to defend this country. I would like to see some people that are actual veterans being uh, put in the position where we can vote for them. Ron DeSantis. I, yeah. Uh, listen, I'm not, I'm not a huge I, fan. I, 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 I'll tell you why I'm not. I was. His first term in office, he killed it. And I'll tell you why. Because he was a middle-of-the-road candidate. I'm neither Democrat or Republican. Neither. I'm actually a uh, libertarian. My belief with Ron DeSantis is he went so far to the right, uh, you know, banning books, banning this crap, but letting people make their own decisions. Here's the problem. In his first term in office, Ron DeSantis gave teachers a raise which I'm all for. He, he protected the Everglades, gave money for that. He stopped offshore oil drilling, all democratic issues, all money issues. And he did, and I thought he handled COVID pretty well. So with those things, I'm saying this guy's a pretty good level headed guy. That's middle of the road Republican. If you want that, this is what you need. Military veteran major in, 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 the, in the military. And he didn't come from money. I, I would he just, went to college on a scholarship. Absolutely, you know JD. What I'm saying? And now he's gone batshit nuts. Yeah. Why do you fight the mouse? It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Do you ever see South Park? Do you know what South Park is? Yeah, absolutely. I you ever watch exactly the episode? My favorite episode on the planet, and we'll watch it, is South Park when when the uh Jonas brothers had a mess with the mouse about the purity ring. Did you ever see that? <laughs> I did, my man. In that fact, is the funniest clip I've ever seen. When I first moved to the state of Florida and, and relapsed, and we were hitting licks, we were doing crimes, I was like, hey, man, uh, we're doing heavy-level fraud. We got all these cards. We got all these fake IDs. Let's go to fucking Disney World. I want to go to Disney World. And my homeboy looked at me, and he said, you're, you're from Oregon, so I understand that you don't understand this. Everyone else in the room got quiet. Everyone else was long-term Florida. He goes, bro, you do not fuck with the mouse. And I was, he was like, literally, they have underground, uh, you know, entire police stations there. And, like, they've got video surveillance everywhere that you can't see. He said, Disney is wired for sound. You don't fuck with the mouse. And Disney also employs so many people. But every time I talk about this on YouTube, people hit me hard with Disney is all a bunch of, of uh, chomos. And they have a human trafficking ring. And like, so look, here's the thing. I have not seen any evidence that Disney as a corporation is involved in anything to harm children. There are multiple busts of people that worked for Disney. Like the latest guy, he worked at a, a restaurant in Disney and he had a bunch of terrible material and he was setting up to do terrible things to literal infants and I get that, but here's the thing. That's where those types of guys go. 
is places where they'll have access to children. Why do you think you get so many teachers that are busted? Why do you think you get so many youth group leaders that are busted? The people that want to prey on children, they go where the children are. If I want to get money, I'll rob a bank. No, no, no. Well, you'll store. rob a jewelry store. Well, but money. Like, if you specifically want cash, you go to a bank. If you want to prey on children, you go somewhere where the children are. So I just haven't seen concrete proof that Disney itself as a corporation is engaging in any of the wild stuff that my my followers, my my subs, my community, they keep telling me they've seen it, but nobody's provided me any proof. Have you seen any proof? Not only have I seen any proof, I see quite to the contrary. They have elaborate systems to catch people. Half the people they catch in Disney is because of Disney technology, Disney's tracking systems, Disney's, uh, of, 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 like you said, high tech. They're the best of the best. Uh, I had a, a nephew who worked on the computers in Disney, and he told me about the, uh, the, the, the rigged uh, background checks he had to go through to work for Disney. I mean, again, anything, anything unturned in your past or anything like that, Disney's, Disney's it's quite to the contrary. They do a great job for a company that big with that many young people, children, uh, uh, using all the parks to have such little amount compared to churches. You take an individual church, you know I had my issues there. Uh, so churches have tax or uh, insurance now. Sam, sexual assault and molestation insurance that most of these churches are getting because they're getting so many lawsuits for this shit. It, it's a real life thing. It's a whole industry to sell Sam insurance to churches. That's crazy. It, it, it's crazy, but needed. And you're talking about an individual church that you would think would be able to get the freaking one or two, three priests that are in there fucking kids. But no, it was turned blind eye. There were nothing. There's no cameras anywhere. There's nothing. It was obviously. transfer them out and keep everybody quiet about it. I was just to say, transfer. It. You know, it, it boggled my mind. The prison system did that too. United States Penitentiary. This year, 2023, uh, was found, Cong Con Congress had a hearing on it. And in a Senate hearing, they said that United States Penitentiary Atlanta, I was there, is a threat to the southeast of the United States, the penitentiary, not to Atlanta, not to Georgia, to the southeast of the United States, the United States penitentiary. And guess what they did with the people there? They emptied the prison out and they transferred all of the guards, put them in other prisons. Now, here's the guards that, all proven, shut down the video system, shut down the megtrometers that check for drugs. They shut them down. The guards opened the door for inmates to go out into the community. Proven. And they don't fire every person that was there. Didn't fire the warden. Transferred everybody. Same as the Catholic Church. It, it, it boggles my mind. So if you want to talk about Disney being that, I would say the government is more involved in, in a pedophile ring than the Disney would be. Now we're talking. That's, <laughs> I, if, if we want to point fingers, I think politicians are the first people that we should be oh, pointing shit, fingers Oh, shit, man. Go there. Larry Craig. He was tapping his foot at me. I was in a stall next to him. I stepped on his foot, though. <laughs> okay, so, Larry, we were just talking about prison, so I got to ask you, man, and forgive me if this is out of pocket. I know, I know you said I could ask anything. 12 years in prison. Were you fucking? Straight. Uh, oh, 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 am I straight? Or what are you fucking? <laughs> uh, 12 years straight. Was I fucking? Of course. Okay. Now, you didn't ask what. <laughs> I, had, I had Fifi's. Yeah. You know what a Fifi is. I've, I've actually made a video where I made a Fifi. You know, I, I want to do that. I, I, I didn't know you did, but I want to do that. And I made the best Fifi. Uh, but, so Fifi's were there. Have I covered... How, are there women that fuck in prison? I've actually, I never did, but I covered for friends who were with a librarian. I've covered on the on the on the yard, like the outside yard in visiting rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, you get there early enough behind the vending machines. Now, if you want to know what else I was fucking, I mean, no comment. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, people ask that all the time. They'll say something. I say, "Would I ask you? Are you fucking?" Are you doing this? No, I'm not, no, I'm not saying it's you. 
I always flip it because I just want to keep people guessing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still going to ask. And you, and I'm going to still say, I don't know. It's a question. Of, I have to think about it. So look, let me know when you make your Fifi video because mine was. Do very- you want to come on and be a, a, a demonstrator? Uh, I mean, I don't want to use it. Oh, I thought maybe, yeah. <laughs> Is it because the wife's here? No, no, I don't want to show the internet my shame twig. Oh, okay. Uh, but, I'm all right in that department. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty all right. You seem like you're a blessed man. <laughs> <laughs> but mine was very rudimentary, uh, and it, that video responded really well. So you could probably show mine up. Uh, you said that you've made very advanced fifis. Mine was bottom of the barrel it was it was a basement fifi no know, so. mine had the, the right glove the right size the right stretch you know under the right mattress uh, it, it was really good and you know it was amazing you noticed something in my office uh and, and if any of my audience figures out what you noticed in my audience i'm gonna give them a book so if or your audience figures out what you noticed that was different in my studio i'm gonna give them a book that sounds like an amazing challenge, man. Larry, I appreciate your time today, brother. You know, JD, uh, we've become friends anytime, anything you need. I look forward to coming wherever you're at, uh, and I enjoy talking to a convict. So that's good. 100%. Hey, man, um, speaking of the book, you guys, you guys should check out Larry Lawton's book, Gangster Redemption. It's amazing. Larry, do you want to tell the people about your cigar company? Uh, I do have a cigar company, and my Crooked Diamond Cigar is right here and it's coming and i want to let everybody know i also have my cookbook coming out i did a video with jd and cooking he knows i know what i'm talking about and i have a cookbook coming out the prison cookbook with larry lawton and that is coming out all his pre-sales just went on sale Five thousand copies are going and they're all numbered and signed and that is it it is over so uh they're gonna go quick Check it out. Check one of my videos out. Uh, JD will probably talk about it when I uh, we'll do we'll do a TikTok or something. Sounds good, man. And just since he mentioned that, I know that all you guys know exactly where to find my man Larry here on YouTube. But you should also go check him out on his TikTok. Uh, we were talking about TikTok for a while. I showed him how to make response videos to comments, and he's going to be on that. So if you guys want to like get more interaction with Larry, go follow him on TikTok. Go follow him on Facebook. As always, I love and appreciate you guys, man. This community gives me so much support. This community has been so amazing. And thank you guys for riding out on yet another video. I love y'all. Till the next one, be good or be good at it, baby. One love. <laughs>